Yeah, so I think inflation is a very muddied term to begin with. Uh, people often refer to it typically in terms of price inflation, because that's what we experience in our day-to-day -day life. But when I use the term inflation, I'm specifically referring to the arbitrary expansion of a fiat currency supply within, a, within the protections of a legal monopoly. So I, what I think is a useful analogy here is if you consider what that a stock certificate for a company Right, it's a title to a share of that company. So you can say that it's a title to the capital that that company represents. So each share certificate is basically a claim on an equity interest in the company. The company is just an assemblage of capital. Um, money is sort of similar in that it is basically a title to global capital in a way that you can use money to effectively is a call option on any form of capital in the world, right? Money can be used to obtain anything. Um, another way to think about that, as I've laid out in some of my work, is that because time, human time is the major, you could say time or energy is the number one or primary input to every economic process that creates anything of value, and money can be used to obtain anything of value, you could effectively say that money is a, a title to human time or energy as well. So if you have any experience investing or running a private company, you know intuitively and obviously that you would never issue a certain class of stock or shares in that company that could issue new shares to itself and externalize the dilution onto another share class. So you had class A that could print itself new shares but not be diluted and basically just externalize the dilution to class B, for instance. If that were the situation on a company cap table, the class A shareholders would just dilute the class B shareholders to zero, right? They just print themselves new shares until they own the whole company. Um, that's obviously insane. No one would ever sign up to own shares in a company that were class B because you'd effectively have no ownership interest. Yet that dynamic is exactly how the current legacy financial monetary system works. There is one group of shareholders in the monetary system that can print themselves new shares in the form of expanded fiat currency supply. They can then dole out that issuance at their own political whim, discretion, arbitrariness, um, and effectively externalize all the cost of that new monetary issuance onto users of the currency. Um, that's inflation in a nutshell. You know, it's if you consider um, again currency as title to capital in the world. If there's one group that can produce new titles to that capital and then externalize the dilution, uh, it's a pretty unfair, unjust, insidious arrangement. So, I've referred to this. The, this actual phrase became very popular. When you say that inflation is legalized counterfeiting, counterfeiting is criminalized inflation. It's the same thing, right? Um, so George Floyd, for instance, I think he was originally um, attacked by the law for having a counterfeit $20 bill, if I recall correctly. I think that was his original crime. That's a crime, right? Because he's not a licensed counterfeiter. Yet that is the exact same operation that the Federal Reserve perpetrates by the trillion and does it legally in broad daylight. Uh, they even hold meetings about it and tell us they're going to do it. And my presumption here is that it's just a generalized ignorance of how money works, that people tolerate this. And we discuss right. it openly that, oh, what is, you know, what is Jerome Powell going to do next week? Is that good or bad for the economy? Debating as if there were some difference, but in, in all cases where you're you're preserving an industry through legal monopoly under the threat of force, if someone else tries to uh, become a competitor in that space, inflation is systematic and effectively uninsurable before Bitcoin. It, it dampens the ability for markets to create wealth in the world. So it's like central banking is shackling the economic potential of humanity, in my opinion. And Bitcoin is very important in that respect in that it liberates us. If we just define sovereignty again, uh, it's a word that people traditionally associate today with nation states. 
It's like, is it a sovereign or a non-sovereign, right? Is the money, people even refer to Bitcoin as non-sovereign money, which I think is a mistake. Um, sovereignty is not given, it's the authority to act as one sees fit. This is not something that's given to us from government. It's not like humans emerged in the world and there were governments and all of a sudden governments decided to give us freedom and rights and all of these things. That's not how it worked. Humans emerged in the world as individuals and we assembled our uh, powers and faculties to create social institutions like government. So we, the so sovereignty itself actually, in my opinion, inheres within the individual. Um, so this is something that we give to social institutions, right? We, in the case of government, we all agree via social contract to say, we're not going to perpetrate violence against one another. Let's give all of the, the authority to perpetrate violence to a monopoly that will then preserve peace if there's any disputes amongst us. So it's not, people get this backwards sometimes. They think that government grants you rights and that's, that's not at all the case. Um, to get to fiat, the original term fiat actually came from fiat lux, which was the original decree when God said, let there be light. Your definition of it is correct. When humans try to perpetrate fiat onto another, it's literally how you handle your children, right? You say, go clean your room, son or daughter, because I said so, right? And you know, if you have kids, like this is hard for your child to tolerate. And there's, there's better ways to say it actually than say, because I said so. It's you kind of tell them what's going on and, you know, why they should clean their room, et cetera, et cetera. But if you carry that over to adult on adult interaction, I mean, no one, no one likes that. No one likes to be told what to do. We're all free, freely autonomous, individual thinking, self-sovereign people. So I think this entire idea of trying to organize human affairs because someone said so, because an authority said so.